So how to design landing gear? First, you need to know what type of landing gear you're looking for. The most common type of landing gears include tricycle and tail dragger. There are also some uncommon type of landing gears such as monowheel without triggers and tandem without triggers. Every type of landing gear has pros and cons. Taking tricycle and tail draggers as example, it is an advantage to tricycle because it can make the airplane dynamically stable on the ground, so it is easier to maneuver, while it is a disadvantage to tail dragger because it makes the airplane dynamically unstable on the ground. So it is not only harder to maneuver, but also have the tendency to ground loop, which is the rapid rotation of an aircraft on the ground. The other disadvantage to tail dragger is, when the pilot applies heavy braking, it may force the airplane to nose down and hit the propeller. And this is not going to happen to a tricycle. The disadvantage of tricycle is higher structural weight, drag, and cost due to three highly loaded landing gear legs. And the tricycle requires an airplane to have higher speed before the airplane takes off. While tail dragger requires lower speed to take off because the airplane is more nose up. This is also the reason why tail dragger is more favored by bush pilots because it can better adapt for the terrain with poor and rough conditions. In this video, we are not going to focus on structural design because it will be another whole chapter. You probably want your landing gear to be retractable so drag can be reduced at cruise. Before you design the geometric layout of the tricycle landing gear, you should know the range of your center of gravity which is the range between the forward CG limit and aft CG limit. Also, you need to know your highest vertical CG location at the aft CG limit. Now draw the prop strike limit to give the propeller some safety space from hitting the ground. According to the FAA 14 CFR 23 925A, the space for tricycle should be at least 7 inches. Next, draw the tail strike line as well as the ground line with the stow angle of attack which is typically around 15 degree. Now draw a line through the center of gravity normal to the tail strike line. Starting from the intersection of these two lines, draw the vertical line. Now the intersection between the vertical line and the prop strike limit is where the center of your wheel should be. Then you can add the tire and leg to the main landing gear. Now you can place the ground line and this is the height of center of gravity, which is going to be useful later. To position the nose landing gear, you should know that too much nose gear load can make the airplane harder to rotate the airplane for lift off, and too light a load will make steering the aircraft harder because there will be not enough ground friction. So usually, nose landing gear should be placed where it carries less than 20% of the aircraft weight when the center of the gravity is at the forward limit, and more than 10% of the aircraft weight when the center of the gravity is at the after limit. Draw a line to connect the nose landing gear and one of the main landing gears, and draw another line that is parallel to it. Then perpendicularly draw the ground line and place the height of center of gravity above the ground line. Now we have this line represents the overturn angle. This angle should be less than 63 degree for land-based aircraft and 54 degree for carrier-based aircraft. To design the geometric layout of the tail dragger landing gear, you should define your forward CG limit and aft CG limit. Also, you need to know your highest vertical CG location at both the forward and aft CG limit. Now draw the prop strike limit to give the propeller some safety space from hitting the ground. According to the FAA 14 CFR 23.925A, the space for the tail dragger should be at least 9 inches. Now draw a line that is 15 degrees from the forward CG limit and another line that is 25 degrees from the aft CG limit. The intersection of these two lines is where the ground line should be and where the tire of the main landing gear touches the ground. To position the tail wheel, draw another ground line that is 12 to 15 degrees. And ideally, you want the angle between this line and the mean geometry core to be equal to the stow angle of attack which is typically around 15 degree. Tail wheel should be placed within a proper location because too much load could make the airplane harder to take off and too light a load could make the airplane lose control in the crosswind easily since there will be lack of ground friction. So generally, 
You want to limit your tailwheel within the location where it carries less than 5% of the weight of the aircraft when the center of the gravity is at the forward limit and less than 10% of the weight of the aircraft when the center of the gravity is at the aft limit. The last thing you need to look at is, you need to make sure that the overturn angle is 25 degrees or larger so that the airplane can be stable on the ground. If your angle is too small, you may think about increasing the space between the tires. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and leave the comment below. It will be very helpful. Thank you for watching.